today we're talking about tint mm -hmm. and temperature. Hmm. And a mistake that a lot of beginners make when editing their photos in Photoshop or Lightroom. Okay, so guys, I've made a lot of temperature and tint mistakes in the beginning of my career when I was learning how to edit my photos because, you know, it's not as easy as it looks and now I see a lot of beginners make the same mistakes, so let's talk about those mistakes. But first, what do those sliders actually do? Well, basically, you use temperature and tint to adjust the white balance or color balance of an image. Simply put, if there's something white, gray or black in your image and you want it to look neutral, so no color cast and not too warm, not too cool, neutral, then you can use the tint and temperature slider to get rid of color casts and to get a correct white balance. And you have to shoot in RAW, guys. I mean, there's nothing wrong with shooting JPEGs, but if you shoot JPEGs, then you have to make sure to already set the correct white balance in camera, because it is possible to use the sliders, temperature and tint when working with JPEGs, but they'll work differently, so you won't get the same result, because you're not adjusting the color temperature or white balance of an image. You can see here how the sliders have different values depending on the file type. Kelvin values, so temperature if you open a raw image, and values from 0 to plus and minus 100 if you open a JPEG. So if you want manual control over the white balance, you have to shoot in raw, because a JPEG has the white balance baked in. But again, nothing wrong with shooting JPEGs, just make sure that you set the correct white balance in camera. Super important, because it's very difficult and frustrating to fix the white balance of a JPEG image. Trust me, I've done it before and no, I don't want to do it again. So yeah, I definitely recommend you to also learn how to shoot in RAW if your camera has that option, because you know, you don't always have time to set the correct white balance and also if you use auto white balance, it usually does a good job, but it doesn't always give you the result that you want, because the camera decides what the image will look like. Let me show you a few examples, and then you'll see why it's so important to be able to adjust the white balance and the color balance manually, and also that you don't always have to go for neutral whites and grays. Okay, so there are a few ways to adjust the white balance in Photoshop or Lightroom. And this is Lightroom, by the way. But everything I'm going to show you works the same in pretty much any photo editing software. Okay, first there's this drop down menu. And here you see the same settings or presets that you also see in the camera menu. If your image was shot on a cloudy day, then you select cloudy and boom. Now, you might like it, you might not like it. But usually it does a pretty good job and you'll be able to find a preset that you like. But what if you're shooting at sunset and it's cloudy? There's no preset for that, so it'll be hit or miss. Another more accurate way to set the white balance is to use the white balance tool here, the, the dropper. Eyedropper? Dropper tool? I don't know how to call it. Then what you have to do is find something in the image that's neutral gray in real life. White also works, but preferably medium gray. Let's try right here on his shirt. Just click and there, that looks okay actually. But the problem with the white balance tool is, let me show you. Let's try a few different gray areas. Here and here. See how I get different results depending on where I click on his shirt? even though it's all supposed to be neutral gray or white, right? So that's why it's so important to train your eyes when it comes to color casts and white balance. And also, even if one of these methods gives you the correct white balance, you have to realize that the correct white balance is not always the best white balance. Mm-hmm, confused? Yeah, good. <laughs> no, look, if you're shooting a product for a company, for the company website, then yeah, the colors should be 100% accurate and correct and whites should be white. So you should use a correct white balance. But tint and temperature and white balance is also a creative setting. So in a lot of cases, there's not just one correct setting. When you're shooting close to a campfire, for example, you don't want the whites to be neutral white. You want them to look warm and yellow, orange. So in that case, you can't rely on the auto white balance, even though it usually does a good job. 
Also, if there's mixed light in a scene, for example, you can't rely on auto white balance. Or let's say that you're shooting on location under fluorescent light. You know, it usually gives you that greenish, gritty look. And it depends. A lot of people want to get rid of that green color cast, but for some projects, maybe you want that green, gritty look. And then you should definitely stay away from auto white balance and do it manually, preferably in post. You should adjust the tint and temperature sliders manually if you want to use temperature and tint creatively to get the look that you want. Here's another example. This photo was shot at blue hour. Now, that building is a white building, so let me use the white balance tool and click on that building. There. To me, this doesn't feel right. It might very well be that this is the correct white balance, but you know, the correct white balance doesn't always convey the feeling that I had when I took the photo, when I saw the scene, this view. For this image, the auto preset here in the drop down menu actually looks a lot better. Because this photo was shot in the evening at blue hour, so it's okay if the whites have blue in them. The whites shouldn't be pure white, not neutral white. And it's the same for the tint slider. This image for example, here I used the tint slider to add a bit more magenta in the image because that's how I remembered this view with a sky that was purple and pink. And by the way, all these images are edited with my preset pack, so if you're interested, link in the description. I always use one of my presets as a base to start editing and then I tweak the colors even more. But anyway, so yeah, you have to learn when to use the correct white balance and when to use an incorrect white balance. Also try to find balance because, you know, these sliders allow you to emphasize a mood or an atmosphere add more blue in blue hour photos for example, but if you take it too far, then it might look over the top, unrealistic. But then again, maybe that's what you're going for, after all, it's art, right? But the mistake that I always made in the beginning of my editing career was that I always tended to go for the more neutral whites and grays. So my blue hour photos looked too neutral, they weren't blue enough, they felt pale and you know, they lacked color. I was relying too much on those tools and tricks to set the correct white balance instead of training my eyes and trusting my eyes. So the key is to train your eyes when it comes to white balance and realize that there's not always one correct white balance and the correct white balance is not always the best white balance. <sighs> I'm sorry for this confusing video. <laughs> I feel like I didn't teach you anything, but I hope it helps anyway. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.